Hello, this is Sho, and thank you for checking out the video. So I was reflecting a little bit on my five really good strategy games for beginners on the Switch, thinking, yeah, I want to do something like that again. I want another five video of my opinions and my thoughts. So rather than making that part two for five more games, strategy games for beginners on the Switch, let's take a look at the opposite side of the spectrum. Let's look at five tough as nails strategy games on the switch now if you enjoy nails on a chalkboard or if you like pulling your hair out when you play a game this will definitely be the list for you or if you are a veteran looking for a game that's really challenging maybe something you haven't tried yet hopefully one of these five games might be good for you now of course this is just my own opinion so everyone has different perceptions of what is difficult so let me know in the th your thoughts in the comments below if you've had the chance to play these games and your experiences with it and yeah as always please be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and yeah drop some comments as well every little bit helps the channel grow and it, you know i really enjoy feeling that love from you all also just to note, this is not in any particular order, so this isn't like a ranking. With that said, let's take a look at five toughest nails strategy games on the Switch. So I had called this the great tasting but disheveled cheeseburger of 2021, and that is King's Bounty 2. Now, King's Bounty 2 is a game that I do enjoy despite it being one of my disappointments. But I am very much looking forward to seeing the devs improve this game in the coming year. Now, why is this game challenging? Well, as of the current patch, I think 1.03, there are no difficulty modes. And you have a very limited amount of battles you can do at a particular time. Which means if you're not smart on how you deploy and use your units, you can miss up on valuable upgrades and ranks to make them stronger for later game battles. Of course... There's lots of gold to replenish, but if they're not strong enough, they're going to get one shot really easily. Not to mention, the ideal system works against you in a similar fashion. If you go too far up the order ideals, anarchy units will suffer a penalty even if they're all together because of your standard character. So you really need to be smart on what kind of units you use, what kind of skills you take, and overall how you're ranking and deploying them. Definitely a challenge that requires a lot of thought, which is very rewarding to succeed in, but still lots of stuff working against you. Next up is the true spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics, and that is Fell Seal. Now, I love this game, and I think some people would disagree with me, but let me tell you, <laughs> this game definitely keeps the challenge on you. Uh, even with the DLC additions for all the job point grinding and everything like that, I've still found myself always outnumbered and always outgunned, even on story missions. Now, I think the big thing to talk about here is this game relies heavily on character customization. If you master those systems, then you will have a much easier time. And there are very broken classes you can make, but that takes a lot of time and research and effort into setting up. And some of these classes require mid to end game items in order for them to be unlocked. Without kind of knowing this or having access to it, it takes a long time. <laughs> it's, it's really an uphill battle. The AI is really smart and will counter you. They will always provide these excellent combinations of units that will just frustrate you every time you're in a new battle. If you're looking for a good challenge, this is definitely a game I would highly recommend. Coming in at our number three position is Ancestor's Legacy. And this is a game I'm very surprised that nobody really talks about. This is a PC port of a real-time strategy game, which I feel runs fairly well on the Switch. This game, you will be playing the role of either Vikings or Crusaders going through real-life historical events, basically, our legacy. Ha. Now, what makes this game so challenging is the sheer number of mechanics involved. You have heavy emphasis on resource management with your base building. You have an extremely tactical system where you need to worry about positioning, maneuvers, formations, and morale. All those things strategy gamers love, but 
with an AI that is absolutely heck bent on smacking you around left and right. One mission, one story mission on this game can honestly take, I think I spent up to an hour and a half to two hours or more on a single mission. And honestly, it gets kind of exhausting if things don't go your way. Now, this game definitely will push you to limits in terms of figuring out how to make it through to the next section. The story missions are really well crafted that require a lot of thought and execution. So definitely a game that requires planning and a lot, a lot of patience. So coming in at our number four position is a game that people have actually mentioned to me in my beginner video saying, why isn't this here? And that is Wargroove. And Wargroove is not there because it is here. <laughs> this game is hard. I am sorry. It is hard. The developers patched it in easy mode because people were having a hard time completing it. Obviously, if you're a veteran of strategy, you should know it. But in this game, the computer will throw units at you almost haphazardly. It takes careful planning, careful execution, careful positioning to make it past some of these maps. The first, I would say the first maybe four to five levels are pretty good, but once you move past the plant people, it becomes a lot harder. <laughs> and um, honestly, it's a fantastic game. I do love it, but oh man, this, this is definitely one of those nail biting hair pulling games that you'll make it so far and then right at the end, you just get swept away in the current and you will hopefully not bite your switch like I did. So coming in in the final slot for this video, we have a game that sort of just kind of came under the radar and then sailed down the stream with almost nobody looking at it. And that is Other Side. Now, this is another PC port over to Switch, which actually plays really well once more. This is a tactical turn-based strategy game and a roguelike. And this isn't like roguelike elements. It is a roguelike first and center. The game even tells you when you start it, you will die. It's okay. Try to keep playing this game. We'll help you after every cycle. Basically you support this entity known as mother in germinating daughters which are your units yes you germinate them that's the term for it and you'll go into battle and you will fight these lovecraftian eldritch horror beasts which are really unsettling to look at and you will die and you will die a lot and you will lose a lot and what I really enjoy about this, but is also just hair pulling, is the amount of mechanics that work against you. For example, every skill that you want to use costs your life points. To restore your life points, no potions, no magic temple chapel guy to give you money. Nope, you have to sacrifice one of your other units to restore that unit's life every single time. It is definitely one of those heavy risk reward games, as most roguelikes are. It's hair pulling, nail biting, just really truly tough as nails. But once you can get through it and get the mechanics down, it is extremely rewarding. So if you are a veteran of the genre and you haven't played this game, do check it out. Otherwise, be ready to get stepped on. <music> All right, there you go. Five toughest nails strategy games on the Switch. Now, if you're a veteran of the genre and you haven't checked out any of these games, I do highly encourage you to do so. These are five really good games in general. And if you're new to the genre and you're looking for something just to get on the deep end, I think these are five potentially good experiences for you. If not, you can do check out my five good RPGs for beginners as well, which uh, I'll probably have linked up there right around now, hopefully. And of course, uh, if you enjoyed today's content, please like the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you've had any experiences with these games or if any of these sound good and you want to hear more. I'd be happy to do some more content on these titles. And yes, subscribe to the channel. Every little bit helps and it is my way to feel your love. So thank you for that. Anyway, this is show. And as always, if the going gets tough, just switch strats. Cheers.